Good evening. Hey, hey. You don't have to lock it. Just close it. Yeah. Welcome to another session of Office Hours with the Government Contractors Association. We've got a live session here going on. We've got people online as well. Thanks for joining us tonight. So all the awesome faces here, thank you for joining us live here in class. Why don't we get started by doing a quick introduction. So these, these sessions are recorded for learning purposes. And so at some point in the future, if you want to, if you miss a session or if you can't attend live sessions like this here, you can join us online and, and get the same information as if you're really here. So I know from time to time you can't physically come to the office and so we have people joining us online. We also have folks that come here and then we have people that watch the recorded session when you can't join online real time, you can always watch the recorded session. As a member, to get to the recording sessions, you go to Gov Association and once you are in, you, let me pull it up. Once you are in, you're going to, um, you're logged in. And once you are logged in, if you go to the members only area, because this is for members only, the office hour sessions, and office hours is your time. As a member of the association, you can come and if you're stuck along the way, if you need answers, if you need solutions to different problems you're having, this is your time to ask any questions that you want. And you click on members only, and then members only, there's a Gov Training Vault. And you go to the Gov Training Vault and members access here. And so when you click on members access, it's gonna take you to the govtrainingvault.com site. And if it's your first time, it's going to ask you to create an account for yourself. So you put your email, your password, and then you log in. But as, as a member, there's no extra cost to use the Gov Training Vault. Now, we do charge for non-members to use the Gov Training Vault. is $39 a month. So you guys are getting, as a member of the association, you're getting a lot of extra value by taking advantage of your membership benefits. And so you can come on here and log in, and there's a lot of content underneath this here. So that's kind of how you take advantage of the training vault. But this is, this is your time, so let me go ahead and open up a new document so I can take notes as you ask questions. But before we start asking questions, <coughs> office hour, and today is 9-19-17. All right, so why don't we do a quick introduction. Let's go around and I want you to share who you are, your company, what, what, your, what your company is about, and then tell us something you want us to remember you by. So it could be, you know, something, something that is going to help us to remember who you are. So we'll start over here. Andrea, we'll start with you. We'll go around. Zeller, Prosperity Point Property Management, and now we focus on real estate and specialize in construction and property management. Um, something to remember me about. <laughs> I'm short, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> okay, hey, that's, that's, that's one identifier, right? So, all right, up next. Uh, my name is Jacqueline Johnson with Mercy Medical Supply. We're a full service medical supply and a secondary boutique. And something to remember me by is that I love people and helping get people or help people, helping people get to the next level in their life. Okay. All right. Awesome. I'm Deborah Dixon and my company is Sunjit Resources. Um, we're an innovative global janitorial service for the um, for the federal state sector as well as the public private sector. Um, we, uh, what I want you to remember me by is, like herself, I'm, um, this company is to collaborate partners mm -hmm. to build upon one another. Okay. So you love collaborating in, in partnerships. Okay. And up next. 
I'm Ivan Taylor. I'm, I'm also too have a janitorial service. I'm just starting out. <coughs> so like, what I want you to remember about me is if you have anybody that needs a janitorial service, you can give me a call. <laughs> okay. Start my business off. Help me get started. Play my roots. All right. Now, Rodney, this have you come to our session before? Yeah, this is about my third time. Third time? Okay. Yes. <laughs> okay. I, I think you dress very casual today. Maybe yeah. that's why. Because yeah. I've always seen you feel like <laughs> in a professional environment. So, okay, so, so that's awesome. And uh, obviously, my name is Abraham. You guys know me. I'm the founder of the Government Contractors Association. What I want you to remember me by is this here. Imagine a mango tree and a little boy climbing that little mango tree and picking a ripe mango from the tree and eating it right from there while I'm sitting on the tree and I'm eating, peeling the mango and then the juice is flowing down my elbow and I'm just enjoying this mango and I love mangoes and so that's, that's what I want you to remember me, the mango guy. But I love government contracting so you can remember me by that as well. Okay, so um, who's got the first question? So why don't we start there? First question. My, my question would be, how do you overcome some of the things that I deal with, and, I, and I'm, I'm trying to assess it on a level where I don't turn it into something negative, you know? Mm -hmm. But some of the uh, vendors, um, the companies that I reach out to for the people, like when I'm trying to get a poll, mm -hmm. <clears throat> I'm running across a, probably more than I want to run across people saying things like, uh, when we we have all of the 8A certified vendors or GSA vendors that we need, so and this is what I'm trying to either get an account, this is before I do any type of credit or anything. This is just an initial conversation so they don't know what I look like on paper, you know? Mm -hmm. And so I'm calling and saying, hey, I'm calling call to see if you all can give me a poll for or who do I speak with to get, give them a poll. Mm -hmm. You know, get a poll. Then they'll say, oh, well, let me put you in with your local representative. Mm -hmm. I've had at least four local representatives within the last three weeks. Two okay. three weeks that have said to me, oh, well, we don't, we're not taking on any more uh, LA firms. Mm -hmm. Okay, I get it. But still, I'm not asking, I'm asking to buy a product from you. Mm -hmm. And I just need a quote for that product. Okay. So, so I'm just trying to figure out, I'm going to be honest with you, this was, my thought was to, do I just start writing letters to whoever I need to write a letter to to see if, am I, what's going on and why I can't get a quote? Okay, so let me make sure I understand your question. Mm -hmm. You're looking to to set up a vendor relationship with a supplier or a manufacturer, mm -hmm. and they're saying we've got enough resellers already. We don't need you. Basically, yes. Okay, so your goal is how do you overcome objection from a manufacturer or a uh, distributor that you want to work with? Right. So any any thoughts for for Jacqueline? Very good question, right? Because you're you're trying to build a relationship. You need their products so you can sell it to the government. Right. And they're saying, hey, we're comfortable with what we're at. We 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 we're not looking for any more resellers or any sales rep to sell our products. So do you have any specific companies? Uh, is it a medical supply company? Yeah, I mean like uh, Run Hill was one. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I was reaching out to them about some beds okay. that I need to give a quote on. Mm -hmm. um, Medtronics is one. Mm -hmm. Just different ones. I could probably sure. go over. Yeah. So, so. But these are different people. I guess my thing is, so you're telling me that you're not going to give me a quote? Are you not going to allow me to sell your product to someone that needs a product? I'm not getting it. It's really not clicking, and I've been doing mm -hmm. medical supplies for nine years. Sure. Not, not, with, not on the government, besides like Medicare and all mm -hmm. them. You get my point. Yeah. And I've never ever, you know, called a company and asked for a credit application and wasn't given that opportunity. Uh -huh. At least when I <laughs> see what I look like on paper. Yeah. 
but your stock of meaning is right here to get it, you're not even willing to send the credit application. Mm -hmm. You're just saying, oh, well, we're not looking for it. I don't get it. So I'm trying to see, because I'm running into this so much, I'm thinking, what happens if I get this really huge something? Uh -huh. And now they refuse to work with me. But of course, sure. if I did, I'd tell you what I would do. I know what I would do. I'll push that thing to the hilt. Mm -hmm. Because somebody will talk to me, and sure. I'm sure I get it. But sure. I'm just saying that on some of these levels, I'm trying to figure out how do you overcome that mm -hmm. so that you don't have to get that involved in it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if a supplier, manufacturer is is making it hard for you to open the door, maybe it's your initial approach to them. So give me an example of when you initially engage them, what would you say to them? Because I heard your comment, they're saying we're not looking for any more 8A companies. No, because that's how, you know, this is how I know to say, so you're the company and I say, mm -hmm. you know, you answer the phone, the phone, mm -hmm. and so oh, how long a minute, let me get you to that department. Because mm -hmm. usually, sure. you, these things that I'm asking for are not the run of the mill things, mm -hmm. like uh, a lot of microscopes, you know, where they can, it up in a home with a camera on it yeah. and take pictures. That's not stuff that I just sell in my store. You get mm -hmm. what I'm saying? But these are the things that the government is requested. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. I'm using that for an example. They, I actually did get a quote on that today, but I'm just using that say for instance. It was mm -hmm. that. So then so I say, tell them what my name mm -hmm. is. And the, before I can even talk to someone, they ask me why am I leaving the product? Because mm -hmm. they, you know, what type of uh, business do you have? I said, I have a medical supply store. Okay, so why are you needing a product like that? Because they know normally just a regular medical supply store is not going to be selling something mm -hmm. like that. So then that's when I let them know mm -hmm. that, you know, I am AA certified or, mm -hmm. you know, and I work with the government. So I need to be able to speak with someone because usually there's a government department. Yeah. So then they transfer me to that department. Okay. When I get to that department, Sometimes I have to leave a message, mm -hmm. but just say I did get someone on the phone. Mm -hmm. Then I introduce myself, and I, you know, proceed to tell them what product it is that I need. And then they say, well, when a lot of them try to figure out how to get the information from the like who it is I'm mm -hmm. selling to, which I never give that information because sure. I already know that backdoor me, you know. Yeah, yeah, they <laughs> they can potentially backdoor you. Uh -huh. Oh, absolutely. Sure. So I do I did, I do know that, but at the end of the day. I explained that to them. They said, well, okay, then they said, well, we're going to put you in contact with your local salesman. Mm -hmm. So then they put me in contact. Yeah. It turns into a whole mm -hmm. thing to my local sales rep. Mm -hmm. Local sales rep eventually calls me. And then, you know, they ask me the same questions. Mm -hmm. What is it that you're needing a product for? You know. Mm -hmm. And then I explained to them that I need to give a quote to the government. You mm -hmm. know. And that, um, Basically, that's what I need to do. I need to give a quote to the government and see if they can assist me with that yeah. matter. And then, you know, you mean the other day, a guy made me feel this big just for a second. Mm -hmm. I had to bounce yeah. back real quick. Yeah. But, you know, he just, you know, made it sound like there was this exclusive club of people out there, this group that, and mm -hmm. now that they have created this group, no, you can't. He can't give me a quote. I said, oh, are you serious? I said, you really can't give me a quote? If I'm trying to purchase a product, I said, do you, does it matter mm -hmm. who you yeah. all sell it to? Mm -hmm. He said, ma'am, that's just the way it is. You can check back with us in a few months. Mm -hmm. And then we'll, you know, if we have opened it back up to bring on other distributors, then we'll let you know at that yeah. point. Right now, you can't. We can't. And, you know, we're not. I said, so now, you know, because I just, I don't know, maybe this is just a part of what I do, but I just ask questions because I'm trying to ask this question over. Mm -hmm. At least three or four times, I'm trying to make sure I understand you. Yeah. So I said, so I just want to understand, make sure I understand what you're saying. So I said, are you, are you saying to me that you're refusing to sell me product mm -hmm. because you guys have a certain group of people that you've already committed to? So nobody, you can't let, you know, no one else can sell your product. I said, even if I just need to sell, you know, get a quote for this one time, you're not willing to do that. He said, no, that's, those are just company policies. Mm -hmm. So, no, we can't. Sure. And this, you basically, it's the same thing with everybody. It's almost like all of them have had a meeting from company to company <laughs> because okay. it's the same exact script. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know what the real problems are with, with that. Uh, usually, this is, this is how... You, the normal process should, should flow. 
you decide that you want to do this type of product, you start building the relationships in advance, because by the time you see a product and you just need to quote, you're more in a desperate mode, and so you're going to come across like, I need it tomorrow, I need it today. And so anytime you, someone feels that you're in a need mode or a desperate mode, it comes across to them that it just gives them a different vibe. So, yeah. So, so if you are in an immediate need mode, going directly to the to the supplier or to the manufacturer may not be the best route. You go to an existing distributor already, who's already selling that product. I'm having the same problem with the existing distributors. Mm -hmm. And so there. You know, because what I do ask when I did ask this guy. I said, can you tell me, you know, your the, some of the name of some of your distributors mm -hmm. who who uh, resell your product? Mm -hmm. He gave me four companies. Yeah. One of the companies said, "Oh, really? He gave you our name? We don't resell that product." Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. I know some of it. I think it's just that's what I think. I think it's just some some of it's racism. I think some of it's because I'm a female, mm -hmm. and I think some of it's because I'm African American. Sure. Yeah, so I understand that that's okay because I've dealt with that's the mm -hmm. only reason why yeah. I'm still in business at nine years mm -hmm. because I figured out how to overcome different challenges. Sure. So it, this is really no different in some senses, except that, it's, except that the product is uh, on a larger scale. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. And it's just a tactic, you know, over the years I've been able to get accounts and things set up. Mm -hmm. But anyway, so then the next one said the exact same thing with, that the guy said. Mm -hmm. That the, the initial head guy. Yeah. So. So let me let me share with you how I normally approach relationship building with somebody. Mm -hmm. I approach it through someone that they know, and let them do an introduction. So that's always a lot better when you're trying to start a new relationship with a supplier or with a with a company. And you're going in their code, they're gonna give you the cold shoulder because you're nobody to them at that point. And so I normally go through a relationship that already knows someone there and they do an introduction. And that's a lot, that goes a lot further than me just trying to knock on the door. Now, sometimes you don't have a relationship and you don't have time to build or to, to see who you know that's tied to this company. And you have to do and knock on the door code, and that's fine. But when you do have to knock on the door and you don't have a warm relationship introducing there, the way I would engage that situation is I would go in there and say, I wouldn't leave with I'm a woman owned or I'm an 8 day company. I, I don't leave with that. I'm the reason why I don't leave with that is because there are perceptions out there that, okay, here you are, here's another woman owned business, here's another minority owned business who just, who just thinks money is going to drop from the sky and that we're just going to give them make it easy for them it to some people they say what they understand and they they welcome that but majority of people out there they may one they may not have any idea what that is or two they they have seen um, other companies that have led with that and that hasn't gone well for them and so they're automatically turned off when somebody says hey i am a minority owned business or i'm a woman owned business so what often, is? often these companies uh, have not represented 8 a companies well. They have not represented women-owned business well. Uh -huh. So it may have left a bad taste uh, to whoever it is that you're, you're engaging. So they think like you're just somebody else. Uh -huh. and, and, and so I don't leave with that for that purpose. And when I engage someone, I would start off with, hey, this, you know, this is who I am. We're, we're, we're this here. We are a business that's selling to the government market. We've got some products that we're uh, looking to do volume purchases or volume purchases that we can sell to the government in the near future. Uh, how do I go about in terms of establishing a better relationship with you? Is there a key person there? Now, this is without a warm relationship. I would go the code this way here. Mm -hmm. And let them find out that I am a women-owned business or I'm a minority or 8A certified company after the fact. And, and, and at that point, they say, oh, wow, you've got all these things going on. And by the way, you're an 8 a company, and you can help our products to get into the government better. So let that be a good surprise to them versus instead of leading with that. Now, if you're talking to the diversity manager or if you're talking to the SBLO, then you can lead with 8A, minority-owned women, and all that stuff. But if you're not talking to the 
to the diversity manager, if you're not talking to the SDLO, mm -hmm. then you don't want to leave with that because there may have they may have had bad experience in the past. The the way you you set up a warm relationship is, for example, we're going to do a live example here. Okay, so if you don't know anyone and you have to take a few little steps to get to where you want to go. Mm -hmm. The best way is your social media. And so you go to LinkedIn and let me log in here. Okay, I think I'm logged in. So which company, let's give me an example of somebody you want to reach out to. One one company. Medtronics. Medtronics. Medtronic Inc. I'm going to close this. There we go. All right, so Medtronic. So I go to people who work at Medtronic. Mm -hmm. And I was. So you put in there? Yeah, I just searched the company name. Okay. Because usually, if they're a manufacturer, they're a large company, they have someone that handles social media, or they have people that work there that's on social media. Mm -hmm. And then I would, I would go through this way here. And then I would find sales, senior sales rep at Medtronic, Greater Atlanta. Uh, leadership program, executive strategic initiative, market development. Regina's uh, senior market development manager at Medtronic. So I will find someone on here, two or three people that I will connect with. And now, if you know someone who's connected to them, that that's usually better. But once I find someone, let's assume that I like, I like. Um, this person is currently the senior market development manager at Medtronic. And then I have all these people that I, I'm connected to down here, right? So it tells me who's who I'm connected to that's connected to this person. Mm -hmm. And then I want to look at who these three people are. And I'm looking at here, okay, Roger House. I know Roger House very well. Mm -hmm. So I can go to Roger and I can say, hey, I'm, I'm going to reach out to Roger. I'm going to say, hey, Roger, do you know this person? With this company because he's connected to them first level right. and so I would say hey Roger I'll call it Roger because I know him so I'm gonna say hey Roger are you connected with this person I'm trying to establish a relationship with them mm -hmm. and can you do a uh, LinkedIn introduction or email introduction for me mm -hmm. and then Roger would do the introduction then I would connect to that person and and then warm up a relationship and and get to know that person mm -hmm. initially through online through LinkedIn and then I do a phone call, get to know that person, and then once I warm up that relationship, then I can say, hey, you know what, I'm looking to, to become a vendor for you guys. What's the best way to, to do that? And who, who, is, is there someone you can introduce me to? And I will ask for an introduction and let that person connect me to someone in their company. So it takes a little bit more work, but it takes about you know, maybe a few days to a week to do that. Yeah, so that means so get it, and I'm not, and that's good. But for the times, like this, these quotes that I was just telling you about mm -hmm. earlier. Yeah. Now this, he sent me that quote, the quote this morning. He wants an answer about Wednesday. Mm -hmm. So some of these things, you know, are very short lived. They don't. And 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 that's fine. Yeah. But. But it allows you to go and build up this relationship so mm -hmm. that the next time you can't right, yeah. you, you you can't look short term, right? Because if, if, you're, if you're not strategic like this, you're always chasing and you're never, you're going to go in circles forever. And so you let a real opportunity let you go and build these relationships. And once you set up all these relationships, the next time it comes around, you're already set up. Now, in the event that you call and they're giving you the runaround and you can't make any headways, then you go around and you build a relationship long term like this here. If they give you a quote, you're good. But if, they, if they're not willing and you're, getting, you're hitting a wall, then you have to go through a, a more strategic approach like this, sir, until you get to the relationship that you need, 
get set up, and you're going to be you're going to be in a position to to succeed more long term. Sometimes things, it's kind of like what you said earlier. Maybe it's because you're a woman. Maybe it's because you're a minority. Maybe, it, it doesn't matter what the reasons are. Exactly. We have to overcome those objections. Right. And and this is one way of how you do that. And like I know Lanisha, so I can kind of reach out to her. I know Sandy. So these are the three people I know that's connected to this person. If, if, if Roger doesn't know, I go to Lanisha. If Lanisha doesn't know this person, I go to Sandy. If nobody doesn't know, then I will connect to her directly without an introduction. And when, when you go in to connect with her, do you know how to connect with her? Let's assume I want to connect with Regina. Right. And I click on her name. Mm -hmm. And if I just hit connect, right, here's what's going to happen. If I just click connect, I can put in a message and hit send now. But every now and then, LinkedIn only allows you to do so many of these here. And let's assume you want to connect with more people and they say you can't connect with them. If you can't connect with them, then you have to go down here and go down to the groups they belong to. Go down to these groups here. And when you find a group that they're connected to, you join that group, and when you join that group, it allows you to connect with them without having to, you know, have their email or their phone number or their contact information. So, the, so there's a few ways of how you can get to where you want to go. It's not the normal process, but but it allows you to get to what you want to do without um, just stopping or or feeling like I'm stuck. And I know you you're gonna find a way. I'm just sharing with you a different way of how to do it. I appreciate that. Yeah. Now, and I'm not, a, I'm not a, an excuse maker, and I get what you're saying when you say it comes around again. Mm -hmm. You would not believe how many quotes I put out there. I mean, you know what I'm saying? That I've looked at, and you know, you know, some of them are not for me. Yeah. So of course I don't try to, you know, answer to everyone that mm -hmm. I get. Yeah. But uh, I have yet to find one that is the same company. Because <laughs> the medical supplies are so broad. Yeah. Then you focus. Though, then, then you can't yeah. you can't go wide yet. You yeah, start you, you start off with a niche area. So you might want to say, hey, I, I want to want to do every single product out there. I'm going to sign up with all the manufacturer that does heart equipment, or that does w whatever the machines are called. Right? You specialize. I only want to do pharmaceutical drugs. See, but that's not. I don't know. Have you ever looked at how medical medical supplies? Quotes are saying. I'm just asking a question. So. I've looked at a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. It's, 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 I mean, like this guy that I was just telling you about. You know, uh, it's the Indian thing mm -hmm. reservation. You know, these are not even things that right now that I'm just going in and looking for quotes mm -hmm. hit right now. This is just a person that's taking an interest in working with my company yeah. and that's just sending me this. Stuff. Sure. So yeah, I don't. You know, of course I'm not going to say to him, "Oh, I only do heart monitors because I know what you make when you yeah. say so from, the, the, that yes, that is if you're strategically marketing. Right. But in your situation, how I would deal in your situation, someone's coming to you and say, "Hey, Jack, I've got I've got these things here. Can you give me price? Because I'm interested in buying from you." Right. So that's the ideal situation to be in. Right. So in that situation, I wouldn't go to the manufacturer. Who should she go to? Any thoughts? It's just a regular, just one of the distributors. Nope. I wouldn't go to, well, they're distributed, but I will go to a subcontractor. I will go to another company that has all of these different products already. And I would say, hey, I've got a, I've got a contract with this company, and I'm, I, I love to use you as my supplier. And so you can call them another distributor, but, but treat them as a subcontractor. It's kind of like, Andrea, we're talking about you finding subcontractors, right? You yourself... Your number one goal is to go get the deals, go get the projects. Your second goal is to find people that can fulfill the work. And so, so in your situation, you, instead of going to the manufacturers to fulfill the work, you go to all the other different companies. I just all this stuff is down the dog. I'm sorry. But it's what? It's a, it's a whole, it's a black book term, but I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. So I ain't going to say that. But it's a terminology. They, I can, you don't understand. 
Yeah, I did. If I did that, they just go right behind my back and take the whole thing because I don't know enough about it. So I don't feel comfortable doing that right now. Mm-hmm. I have to be educated. You get my point? I really don't. I don't know enough well, about the whole thing. That, um, somebody could easily take the whole thing away from me, and I wouldn't even know what to do because I don't know enough about that. In, in business, and all of that. in business, sometimes you have to take a risk. Yeah, you go, man. Yeah. Yeah, but that's the thing. Maybe you would have to sit down with me. Somebody would have to sit down with me still mm-hmm. to educate me more. I'm just yes. being real now. Yes. I'm not educated enough on that part. Well, to feel comfortable. You have to protect that. yourself. Exactly. So be, when you they say yes, I want to work with you. You find a a another company that does exactly what you do, but they just have like 500 different products. And they could probably fulfill 80% of the whole list that you're talking about. And in that situation, you go to them, you say, hey, I've got a order for some products, and I'm looking you know, for someone to partner with me to fulfill everything on there. And I can only do a portion of it. I need someone else to help me. And they say, oh, yeah, we'd love to, to partner with you. So the first thing you send to them is what? The, the, I guess the order, right? No, 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 not, not an order. You send them an NDA, a non-disclosure agreement and you send them in your non-disclosure you also want to have a non-compete clause right what? non-compete uh, yes and once they sign that then you can tell them details and you right. can tell them who you know you can tell them more information but they have to sign that non-compete non-disclosure agreement mm-hmm. and we have we have samples of that in the software so who has the software in here? Nobody. Okay. So we have that. Sa- we have samples of non dis- non non disclosure agreement and non compete agreement in the software. So you so you provide that to them. They sign that. Then you can disclose information to them, and then they say yes, I can do this work based on what you've sent us. All this equipment, we can fulfill most of it. So how do you pay? How do you, how, I mean, how does the pay go on this? You. You're the prime. They're your sub. So, so they say we can do this here. So they give you your price, and then you put your markup in it, and then you give your that price to your to the. Company. So that's the same thing that I'm already doing. I'm just yeah. saying that you're just mm-hmm. working with a distributor. Yeah, you're working with. Right, a, I'm just purchasing it with a competitor. Them. Yes. Right, competitor. Okay, yeah, okay. Or I call them a teamy partner or a subcontractor. And even though they're your competitor, they're your subcontractor. At time, at time. Yeah. <clears throat> So, so that's how you would go about it, because you can't sign up with 500 vendors. I mean, to be a vendor with 500 manufacturers, but there are people that's already signed up to do all of that. And, and that's one way of how you can get ramped up very quickly. Yeah, I think we're saying the same thing. I'm not being, it's, I wish you could come to my school one day and just sit down with me <laughs> Because this is some of the same, this is some of what I'm doing, but I'm still getting that same pushback on it. Because some of them, some of what I am finding now, what I think I'm finding now, is that some of them really care about what they can get out of. They just don't want to work with certain people. And that's and the at, bottom line. And at the end of the day, if that's the person, then you don't want to do business with them also. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And so then yeah. I know I keep it moving. Yeah. You know, yeah. Anyway, I'll be okay. Yeah. I'll overcome it. Trust me. Sure. I'm, just, I'm new to this. <laughs> but, you know, it's like anything else. You know, you learn with you can you can't do and what mm-hmm. you know how to get over this around this and you know and then some of those same people that may not work with me today will probably work with me in a few months yeah. or a year. Yeah. I get it. You know, it's just that they'll crush me sometimes. Well, keep in mind that you build relationships today because you, you not because you need it today. Right. You build right. you build the relationship today because you need it down the road. And and so whether you connect with them on LinkedIn and then foster relationship or whether you use you can call, you can reach out to another another competitor and say, hey, I, I, I'd just like to grab you, grab time with you for breakfast or lunch. Because I know we're in the same space, but there's a lot of projects that I have access to, and I might need a teamy partner in the future. Do, do, would you be interested in meeting up with me? And, and you foster that relationship, not because you need a project now, and if they're, if they're open to doing that, you're building these relationships, because at some point it's going to come full circle. Like one of the companies I'm working with, mm-hmm. we talked about these principles. She built relationship. She took, she went and like one of the strategies I taught her was, like you're a new 8A. So mm-hmm. this is this this strategy is very important to you. Okay. 
So I taught her to go to the expiring, all the expiring 8A companies that's about to graduate or just recently graduated. Uh -huh. What they have is they have contracts that they won as an 8A company sole source. Uh -huh. It's gonna, that same contract is gonna come up for renewal uh -huh. and it's not going, they're no longer an 8A company and they can't get sole source again. So now they can, they can team with you, let you be the prime, and they become the sub because they already have the relationship. They already have the, the everything is going well. The agency wants to award it back to them, but they're no longer 8A, so they can't social it to them. Mm -hmm. Well, they can tell the relationship, the contract officer or whoever it is, hey, we're, we, we're in a teaming relationship or we're in a joint venture with this new 8A company, mm -hmm. and you can get us through our new partnership and then they can social it to you, you do 51%, you sell about 49% to the other company. Okay. So I taught her how to do that. Okay. And so she went out there, and, and let me share with you quickly on how to do that. You go to dsbs.sba.gov, mm -hmm. and once you're on this site here, let me just type in the notes here. I think this is something painfully went over in my uh, orientation, but I do want you to go back over it. Mm -hmm. So you go to DSBS, and you come on here. Let's assume we started with just Georgia, okay, mm -hmm. since you're in Georgia. I'm going to check off Georgia here, mm -hmm. the state of Georgia, and I come down here, and I want to check 8A um, active and previously certified. Okay. Because I want currently certified and previously certified. Then I'm going to go down here and I'm going to go down to this table down here. This is a very important table here where it says search results display option here. I want to make sure you click on the edit the columns to be displayed. You click on this button and there's going to be edit column to be displayed. And in here, it's only right now it's only displaying the name, the contact, the address, and the capability narrative. What I want to do is I want them to I want to show me the um, I want them to show me the Dunn's number. I want the email address. I want the phone number. Are you are you checking all that stuff? Yeah, I want the phone number, I want the website, and I want the year they were established. So once I click on that, you see up here, it, it added up to the list. It added to the list up here. So I'm getting the name, the person, the company name, the narrative, dance number, email, phone number, website, and year established. And oh, I want other, another thing. I want 8A graduation. It's down here. Oh, it's further down. 8A exit, 8A exit date. Because I want to know when the exit the 8A come program. Because uh -huh. that's who, you know, I want people that's about to graduate or just graduated. Right. And it's good to kind of see, you know, a few other things, but that's good enough for our purpose here. So now we putting in there, um, did you put in there the, like, the same, you, you can't, yes. Next couple, next couple I'm, I'm going to do that next. Okay. So once you have this, make sure you hit the save button. If you don't hit the save button, it's not going to take. So you hit the save button. So now it shows up here. And then you want to make sure that you put in the NAICS code that you're in because you don't want to find every single 8A type of companies out there. Exactly. So what's your primary NAICS code? 425-423. Uh, 425-423. And any secondary NAICS code you want to use? Um, well, this is good. This is good for our purpose here. Okay. And you can do more. So, so Deborah, is she, does she sound very credible to me? No. Yes, because she knows her next code like oh, that. I you said for the second one. Well, yeah, the second one she doesn't, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, but the first one she was on. Yeah, but most, mostly I only expect all of you to know your primary next code. 
Now, if you know the second one, that's just bonus. But memorize your primary NAICS code. And so she just added a lot of value. If I'm a contracting officer, she knew her primary NAICS code like that. I said, okay, she knows what she's talking about. It, it gave me a good feel about who she is. Mm -hmm. Then I'm going to go ahead and uh, down here, I want to, I don't want the table format. You see this table format here? I don't want that. I want the Excel spreadsheet. So I'm going I'm to click on HTML and I want to get it in Excel. And then I'm going to hit search. Actually, it's, it's, it's actually 423450. Okay, well, you lost track of me. Okay. You're out the window. <laughs> okay, I lose it, but that's going to be this 423450. Okay, well, let's, let me go back and do it. Let me finish this here first. <laughs> it's time to get the Sorry, first time. <laughs> well, good. But I do, there's two numbers you have to memorize. What are they? John. Not Cage. Yeah. John's number and primary NAICS code. Where did you get the numbers from? Well, see, if you have to pull up your phone, you've lost credibility with the contracting officer. Well, then go if I'm on the phone. I mean, well, if you're on the phone, but, but when you're out networking and you're out talking to people, and, and, and you say, uh, I don't have my information with me. I wouldn't say that. I'm just. You're gonna have it's to. A lie. You know, I, I get you. Though. I, I'm not making lists because I will learn it, and uh, memorize it. But it's so All many right, different so things you have to know. Four, two, three. Four, five, zero. Four, five, zero. Okay. Four, two, three, four, five. Yeah, that the other next code wasn't a real next code. Okay. When you did, you did it. Yeah. <laughs> you get, you get, you get, you get the numbers from that. your dance number. You get it from Dun and Bradstreet. Okay. Your your primary next code, you get it from census.gov forward slash NAICS. But you need a, um, you need the software or you need, there's, there's some other classes. This is, I can't teach you how to do that in this class. So yeah. this is to address only questions that you have. But to show you how to do all of that is like another whole session. Yeah. So, but yeah, but you go to sam.gov to register your business. You go down to Bradstreet to get your dance number. And the second, you want a secondary? I think you need one. Um, three nine nine one one three. Okay. I have several of them though. Three nine nine. Uh huh. One one uh three. One one three. Okay, that's good. Just two is good. So no, three three nine one one three. I'm sorry, I don't have glasses. I need them with. Three three nine one one three. Yes, sir. Okay. All right. All right. So let's search. I don't know why this is pulling up. So this is this is a tool that will help you to do all the things that you're that you're asking. So we have a software called Gov Fast Track, and the software takes you through all the things that I'm training and everything else you need. The purpose of this course is or this session is to kind of give you you know, along the way, if you're stuck, it allows you to ask questions, and, that, and that's what the purpose of, of Office Hour is. So I'm going to log in. And it's going to take me in. And so this is, this is one of the companies that we're, that we're working with. And, she, and they've done 43% of the work. And so it goes into like for you, when you're talking about registration, you click, click on registration and click on registration, federal vendor registration, and then how to, how to register in SAM. And it says, okay, get your SIG code, get your DUNS number. And how you get your DUNS number, you click on this link. You click on that link, you go get your DUNS number here. And then you click on, you know, to get your next code, next step, 
click on this link to get your next code, and you just kind of follow this here step by step. So, so go to GovFastTrack.com. GovFastTrack.com. But if you want to get it, um, just let me know, and we can set set it up for you. It's the as a as a you're part of ABC. Huh? You're part of the um, Black Chamber. No, um, small business, small business group, small business channel. Okay, so we we have small business channel. Yes. That's BC. That's BC. Yes. Oh, okay, okay. Yes. So Southern Barter Club. Yes. Okay, yeah. So you're part of Southern Barter Club, and so you have a reciprocity of membership with us. So this software normally costs uh, two thousand dollars, but you can get it for half price, nine hundred ninety nine dollars. And so it's a one time cost, and so you can kind of get it, and it will take you through step by step all the different steps that you need to do. It takes you through it step by step like this. So coming back to yours, it's finished here. So, mm -hmm. so I've got it opened up here, the Excel sheet. Wow, it actually gives you that homework now. Oh, can I come up with Yeah, I'm sitting right up here. So you're saying that she can probably call and start building a relationship with all of these people because they're off their contract is about to end. Some of them, yes. But let me see why it all this didn't take. Um, website, A Day. Yeah, I've got all this here. So let's see if it you got you got people's names there, which just mean it didn't take them. Sorry. Yeah, no, I'm looking for the I asked for the uh, eight eight graduation. Oh, okay. time. I was about to say I see people there. There you go, right here. You're the first one. Is that you? Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So diabetic souls, I know these guys. Reeves, I know these guys here. Go back down though. That my my thing's supposed to be supposed to be set up. I'm trying to figure out why there's nothing there. Capability narrative? Yeah, mm -hmm. you're missing that. Yeah, I'm going to call and check on that tomorrow. Uh, you do it on your SAM profile. So on your SAM profile at the very end, mm -hmm. there says, it says, right before you hit the submit button, it says small business certification. You click on that and it takes you to the DSBS portal and that's how you update your capability narrative there. Okay, come on, I'm working with a company. Okay, yeah. I got you. But but for some reason it didn't it didn't pull it up because I double checked and we did put phone number and website so yours. Pull all the information. Eight graduation. Yeah, I'm not sure why I didn't do it, but let me double. Do they still allow you to do that? You think? Yeah, yeah. They it should, do? It should. Yeah, I'm not sure. Let me just go with one next scope for now. And eight day active and so, yep, I've got that. Okay, so let me do it again. I want to ask, I need someone to help me with Gov Connect as well. Gov Directions? Direction, yeah. Uh, ask Pam. She can help you with that. I need some help with that. Yeah. Oh, we're doing a training on that tomorrow. That's, is that going to be part of the yeah, orientation? That's part of it tomorrow. Okay, I'll leave it. Yeah. Nine till one. One. Yeah. Oh, wow. I set up a meeting. I forgot about it, but I'm going to pick my, my meeting information and bring it with me and, and try to set that up like the three. Mm hmm. Let's see here. How often do y'all do it? You guys do that orientation? Every two months. Every other month, yeah. So, because it takes a lot of time, because it takes like four hours for us to do it. Mm -hmm. And and so there's like four or five of us helping out with the whole program, and so we, so right now now if we have you know if there's a lot of members joining every month, we might do it every month. Right. But right now we get you know every we get about ten fifteen new members a month, mm -hmm. and so we're doing it you know every other month right now. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So about ten to twenty people. Yeah, sometimes we have twenty thirty people. Sometimes we have twelve to ten people, just depending on how many of them come.
So if we can't make it tomorrow, can we reschedule for the next one? Yeah, but it'll be in November. Okay. Well, the website is really off today because it's. Well, it's not giving you what you are requesting. Yep. I've got everything here. Let me refresh this here. Might be. Yeah, this website, look, look, you see that here? When was it last modified? Oh, that's good. Come on. <laughs> yeah, I believe that. Okay, so, it's, so the internet has changed quite a bit since 2004. <laughs> this is true. 15 years ago. It is a good long while. Huh? Yes. Things are going on so different from 13 years ago until it's just ridiculous. Yep. Yesterday. Exactly. Yes, and that's why. Oh, yes. Yeah, things have changed quite a bit. Maybe. Save. All right, so I did that again. Did that. Let me try it again, see if it works. But the key thing is on this here, there's going to be a column that shows the A day graduation mm -hmm. date. And it will have all the other information too. And so you'll look through this here. Because I'm looking through all this profile here. You're the first company to show up. You're, the, you're missing the capability <laughs> narrative. And so you, you look weak to the eyes of the gum already. Uh, and then there's, and it's just not you, it's other companies too. So in your industry, only um, about 30 companies that have your next scope that's AD certified. So that's actually, yeah. Ooh, this is like entering into a whole other world. It's, it's a <laughs> it's foreign like, language. Yeah, it's most certainly a different language. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, I have to say, Lord, I thought it was hard starting up from the beginning. This is like, I don't know, it's just different. I guess I have to just get used to it. Just unknown. Unknown, yeah. Mm -hmm. But the good news is what I'm looking at, this is just enlighten me, I don't know about you guys, but getting in contact with some of these people that are about to graduate, that's a door. That's a, that could be a door. All right. That's okay, sure. You know what I mean? That could be half your battle. All okay. right, so it, it pulled up for us here. It, it did it? Yep. Okay. Can you uh, uh, enlarge it just a little bit? to some of the crimes. So you get a graduation day here, right? Mm -hmm. Is that to, 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 so? So, so I want to look through this here, and I want to see. Are when they going to be graduating in two thousand and twenty-five? Yeah. When they, they was established in ninety-seven? How well, many years ago? Well, no, no. This is when they started their business. This is oh, not when they got graduated. Yeah. Did they cheat me all my years of being in the program? <laughs> Well, you know, the 8 program used to be 21 years. Oh, my God. Um, it, was, it used to be unlimited. It was every seven years, and you renew it every seven years. Like the GSA schedule kind yeah. is 25 years. Yeah, so it used to be a long time. And I met a gentleman. He's, he's, he's old as dirt right now. He's retired now. But great guy, you know, lots of sense, good sense of humor. But he was in the program like 23 years. Did they, did they have set asides at that time? They did. And, they did? And there was not that many 80 company. They still got sole source, and it was a lot easier back then. Yeah, because so, yeah. so, I, I feel like it's, you know, when I use the word hard, right. just because I don't know, you know, a lot, I'm not familiar with mm -hmm. a lot of what I'm, with what I'm doing. I'm not totally, like, you know what I'm saying, totally, like, with the government. GSA is mm -hmm. different. Like, I get purchase orders all the yeah. time for them. That's different. Yeah. For this right here, you have to actually go out there. Well, the bigger projects, GSA is going to pay your bills, right? They're mm -hmm. going to get you four or five units, ten units, yeah. you know. It's going to pay your bills. Mm -hmm. But if you want the multi-million dollar this deals, take you over. yes, it's, it's, gonna, it's a whole different world. It is. Huh. So you go through here, right? So this company graduate January. Yeah. 
Okay. So this might be a good company for you to reach out to. This is about to graduate. Who is that? Right, the Unity. It's not. What's the name of that company? UMC. UMC. Doing Unity. business as Unity ITS. Then the little. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. Did, did they give a phone number for them? Oh, no. Did you ask? Them yes, that? I did. Here's yeah, a phone number. Now here's what you want to do. You want to take this Don's number, mm -hmm. and you want to go and find out if they want any contracts. Okay. USAspending.gov. So say this, these things I was telling you about with this guy that I'm working with. Mm -hmm. Say I win that, right? And you know, work with him on that. Would I put that in the DSBS? If you, if you're doing contract work for this this Indian company, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. I mean, because it shows credibility. Mm -hmm. it's, it's yeah. Like, you put as your part of your reference in there. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now, where, where are you getting ready to go to now? I'm, I'm going to see if Unity ITS have won any contracts. Oh, so what is this called? USA USA spending. Spending. Gov. And I'm going to paste paste their Dunn's number up here. Now, Dunn's number have to be nine digits. So sometimes there's a zero in front, and Excel won't take the zero, right? So if we look at Excel, if we look at this here, this list here, mm -hmm. you're going to see that some of these companies they're digits, they're not nine digits. They're not nine digits. Yeah. So if there's if it's not nine digits, you'll know that they need to uh, add, add a zero in front. So now I'm going to go here. I'm going to paste it up there. I'm going to hit go. Now, on, on this uh, Gov Spending, mm -hmm. are you with the company like myself or wherever we put this information there? Or does the government just automatically put that in there for you? The government does it. So they won. One contract, nineteen thousand dollars. For the whole time they was in eight eight. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, that's yep. scary. Yep. Oh and wow. So that means they didn't really work there eight eight. Yeah, they they either didn't know how to do it, or. But did you think all of that stuff got put in there? And the last time they won was in two thousand eleven. Oh, so they stopped. Do Do you think all of that thing, all of their work was yes. put in there? So, say for instance, it's I work quiet. with this, this this guy, and he specifically said he wanted an 8A firm mm -hmm. for this. And say I work with him, and then I we, I fulfill the. Uh, well, this is <laughs> prime contracts with the government. This this shows prime contracts with the government. Okay. So, so in that situation, mean? is if the uh, 8A or the Native American, mm -hmm. a, uh, Indian tribal purchase, you know, or what is it the Something like Something that. Like that. Right. They may get the funding from the government and it goes to them and then they're just buying from you. That may not show you winning contract with the government. It so when you say winning with the government, help me when you're saying, because I'm thinking all of this is, I'm serious. So what's the difference? If a company, like for example, um, let's take transportation as an example. Mm -hmm. The US DOT, mm -hmm. Most of their money goes to state DOT. Right, right. And so you're doing work for the state, but even though it's federal funding, but they're not going to report it as you win a contract with the federal government. You're just doing government with the Georgia Department of Transportation. And so you're getting money from them, but not necessarily from the government. It's not going to show up in this system yet. So he could have done a lot better more. It could have been. It's just not showing there because. Correct. But the 8A is not a state certification. It's a federal certification. Right. And so if he's not winning federal prime contract or, or sole source with the federal government, it tells me that he doesn't know what he's doing. Oh, so if it was a sole source, then it would show up It would show up there because that's oh, okay. a prime. That's a prime directive with the government. I got you. I need this. So do I need to ask this guy? Is, the, is this these things that I'm getting ready to work with? The, with the Indian? Yeah. How would I know if that's a sole source? I'm just saying, how would I know that? Well, he's just pricing. I get that, but just yeah. say I want it. I'm just saying. <laughs> if, if I just, no, no, no. I'm just asking yeah. because you, I just no. I, I, I mean, you want to go ahead and foster a relation with him and say, hey, you know what? You know, um, I I found some of the products that you that you're looking for. Uh, a few of the items uh, require a some vendor relationships that I haven't established yet. But I'm going to go establish those relationships. So I can better support you for the long haul. And then and then you just get, kind of get to know him and then ask. Pick his brain here and there, and say, "Hey, what do you normally sell? What what do you normally buy? Not sell, but what do you normally like to buy?" Mm -hmm. 
And so I can go ahead and, and, and get those relationships going in advance. Just get to know him and, and ask him some good questions and see what they're looking for. And, and then you start to build those relationships and what either with a team partner or with the directly with the manufacturers mm -hmm. and get that going and see so you can for the future. Because I could have asked, but I wasn't there. I hadn't talked to you yet. Yeah. <laughs> well, that was a month ago mm -hmm. when I first met him. So we already established a relationship. Okay, good. Because he good. is calling. He calls me. Okay. And I feel so good every time he yeah. calls me. Awesome. I do. I feel really good because I feel like, wow, at <laughs> least so he's, weird, has, he's feeling comfortable enough with me. Yeah. And, you know, and it was like yesterday he said, um, he, he apologized. I was mm -hmm. like, but he didn't owe me no apology. Yeah. You know, he said, he really did. He didn't understand. I was yeah. just glad to hear his voice yeah. because it's like he disappeared for a moment. Mm -hmm. I was like, well, I don't want to disappear desperate, mm -hmm. so I'm not going to call him. You know, yeah. I, I reached out to him one time and just said, hey, just reaching out to you, checking, you know, I know I sent you some quotes. I want to check on the status of it. Mm -hmm. And then he, after that, he did give me a call and said, hey, I just want to let you know I didn't put, get you. Uh, I'm still waiting on some funding, mm -hmm. something yeah. with the funding. Sure. So when he called yesterday, he said, hey, I, you told me you was 8 right? I said, I am. Mm -hmm. He said, yeah, I remember when I talked to you almost a month ago that you told me that. Well, remember that list I told you about? Mm -hmm. I said, yeah. He, you know, I said, yes, sir. I don't say yeah to him. Mm -hmm. I just I said, yes, sir. He said, well, I'm going to send that list over, but I, I also have something I need an immediate quote on. Can you get it back to me really quickly? And I said, sure. You know, I said, send it over mm -hmm. to me, and I'll get it back to you in a very timely manner. So he gave me... He sent it yesterday and he gave me until to uh, Mark to the Wednesday, mm -hmm. which normally they at least give you a week. Yeah, yeah. But then I got I already got my quote on that. Mm -hmm. I got two quotes on that already, and then I'm waiting on one from the manufacturer. So okay. I did go to do the, to the distributors, mm -hmm. but I went to the manufacturer okay. as well. So as I was leaving today, the young lady from the manufacturer called me. Mm -hmm. She was really trying to find out who it was I was sending yeah. to. <laughs> yeah. And I just finally told her. She said, "Well, I'm gonna have to have that." I said, "Well." I think we can make this happen without my actually disclosing who it is I'm selling mm -hmm. to, but this is what I'm trying to accomplish. She said, okay, well, that sounds good. I'll get you a quote by the end of the day today, first thing mm -hmm. tomorrow morning. Yeah. So that's good. That's three quotes. Mm -hmm. Now I can make an intelligent decision, you know, sure. and whatever I'm going to add to it. I would love it because I can send it to my day early. Mm -hmm. And then, mm -hmm. with that being said, I, then he sent me um, probably about 4.30, he sent me that whole list with all that stuff on. Mm -hmm. Now, what he said to me at the beginning of us speaking a month ago, he said, he, he asked me about sending me, because he, he sent me the things, I don't know how he initially heard about me, but I called him as soon as I got it. Mm -hmm. I introduced myself. Yeah. And, you know, and we just kind of chatted for a moment. He said, so are you 8A? Are, are and I said, yes, I am. Mm -hmm. He said, well, good then. He said, I'm, kind of, I'm not new to this. I did all this a while back, went away for few years mm -hmm. and now mm -hmm. they call me back and when we come back sure. I don't feel like dating around for an 8 day firm. Mm -hmm. He said, do you think you can, you know, provide me what, what I need? I said, I'll do my very best. I'm sure I can. Mm -hmm. So that, that's awesome. That's, yeah. Yeah, so. yeah. Well, think of, think of it this way here. This person here, mm -hmm. they, they have all these different fulfillment that they have to do mm -hmm. during the purchasing agent. Right. It is their job to go find and source out all these products so that their client or really their employer mm -hmm. can, can meet all the requirements. So they, they're just a human being. They have a real problem on their hand. They right. got to find someone that can do great work for them. Right. And, and they don't have time to shop around for 20 different suppliers right. to sell to them. And so if they can come and find a good quality company like yours to go and support them, they're going to come back to you over and over and over and over again. And, and that's how it works. So, so. Yes. I'm really believing. Okay. You know what it says. You know, I feel good about it. And then on one of them, he said, well, I have this one thing here. The only thing is, he said, you gotta, you're going to have to be here, like, to get all this stuff. So I didn't start naming all this stuff. He mm -hmm. says, I'm going to put you through that. I'll find somebody else for that. Mm -hmm. And then we started the name, which it was something like, right now, that was like way over my mm -hmm. head. And I, I knew I wasn't ready for that. Yeah. So yeah. I was like, okay, Lord, let me find somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, it was it was really detailed, detailed stuff. So that's where once I start to make money, I start to hire people in different areas mm -hmm. to be able, you know, to go in and set things up and do things like that over time. Mm -hmm. 
Exactly. I would think that's what I would yeah, and, and take steps. Don't overpromise. Right. right. And, and yeah, and, and and what you did, what you said, hey, I'm sure I can. I'm gonna do my very best. Mm -hmm. You're not overpromising. You're gonna you, you're telling him that you're going to do your best, mm -hmm. and you're gonna you know you just gonna make the best effort you can. Exactly. And and that's only that's all you can do when someone's giving you something new to test you out. Mm -hmm. And what I don't like is a lot of companies will overpromise and not be able to deliver. And it's better to to be a little bit cautious and say, "Hey, I'm going to do my best." Right. And sometimes, once you have a little rapport with them, right. and you can say, "Hey, you know what? You you just got back into this, sir. I'm just getting into this, sir." Right. So I would really want to build a good relationship with right. you. And, right. and sometime, uh, I'm learning also. I didn't know if I was supposed. I'm glad you're saying. No, it's, and I, I mean, wasn't really sure. I said, "You know, should I tell him?" If you have a report, to... now if you don't have a report, but that was at the beginning. I thought, and I thought, you know what, Matt? Right now, you probably don't need to know I'm brand new, brand new. That's yeah, I, correct. I the <laughs> initial. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the initial conversation. You don't want. You don't want to share everything. Exactly. You you want to build a report first mm -hmm. and, and until you feel comfortable, mm -hmm. and and they're gonna appreciate that. Right. They're gonna come to you and they're gonna say, "Okay, hey." They they love you. They they're gonna appreciate that you're honest, mm -hmm. genuine, real with them. And you say, hey, I, I don't know if I can handle this, but I'm gonna go and see if I can do this. Right. They appreciate that versus you saying yes and they're waiting, waiting, and the last minute you can't do it. It makes them look bad. They can't, they can't. get to what they need. Right. So being real and being honest and genuine with them is gonna help you further. And right. they and they know to not give you too much. Right. And they know that. See, that's what he did over over the last mm -hmm. month. He has sent me about. Six quotes, mm -hmm. and on everything he sent me, though I was able to give him a quote on it. But one thing that he sent me, I found it repurposed. So I sent him an, a, 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 an, a, 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 an email, and I said to him, "I'm not sure if the government buy repurposed product, but I was able to find this product repurposed in new. Mm -hmm. Would you like for me to give you a quote on both of them?" Mm -hmm. He sent me an email back. I don't remember his email. Mm -hmm. He sent me an email back and said, "Thank you so much." Mm -hmm. I appreciate you giving me the opportunity mm -hmm. to make a, a, a decision between the two. Send me a quote on both of them. Sure. And then at the end of the day, he did send me a thing back, a text, uh, an email back and said, well, the government's not going to buy a refurbished, but we really think, I appreciate you consider, mm -hmm. being considered yeah. enough to. I kind of knew that wasn't, but I thought, yeah. you know what, this might be a little play in here so they can see that I'm doing yeah, You're, you're making the efforts. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And you're trying, you're, you're trying to meet his needs. Uh, the best way you can. Right. Because I didn't know if they would buy a repurpose. I thought, you know, it sounds. Sometimes they do. Right. Yeah, sometimes they do. It's depending on the industries, mm -hmm. like toner cartridges, they'll buy refurbished all the time. Okay. Because to them, ink is ink at that point, right? And they save them money. Right. So there are some things that they do buy refurbished, but something they want OEM, and uh, that's all they want. So. All right, so that's all the time we have today. Deep dive session is coming up. And if you have other questions that I didn't get a chance to answer, uh, ask me after the sessions here. Thanks for joining us. For those of you online and those of you in class, we are signing off for today's uh, office hours, and we'll see you next week, same time. Thank you, Gay. Mm -hmm.